I don't know about you, but I often have an app idea for a side hustle or a business, uh, only to find out two seconds later that app has already been made. So I have found myself Paul from Insights. Hello, Paul. Hello. Uh, <laughs> to talk me through the process of how do you actually go about creating an app. Paul and his company Insight have done apps for architects, to airlines, universities, and even recently a donut store. Intro. In intro. <laughs> Roll the intro. So let's kick it off with the five steps on how you're going to bring your idea, your app idea to life. The first step that we'll be looking at is how you conduct your research to bring your idea to life. The second step is we'll be creating something visual to bring the app idea to life. The third step is designing and branding. What do you want your app to look like? The fourth step will be um, coding and development. So how are you going to get this app functional? And the fifth step will be testing it and actually launching it. Okay, so you said the first step is research. Is What's that look like? So the first step in research would be to actually understand what you want your app to do and whether it's possible. So go out there, figure out whether there are other apps similar to yours, whether you can do it better and figure out whether you're trying to make money off your app, whether it's for businesses, whether it's for consumers. And if like um, a similar app exists. Already. Yeah, a similar app exists. How can you do it better? So the next thing you were saying was to create something visual. Like in my head, it's like, are you physically drawing boxes on a piece of paper to like map out what the app would look like or what do you actually do? So yeah, in the second step, we'd be creating something visual. So, I mean, you could use a piece of paper, you could use a computer program to help you with this. Yeah, then it's like, all right, cool. So like what programs are out there? So there are heaps of programs out, yep. you, out there to help you with this type of thing. You could use Adobe XD. You could just use Google's draw.io. You can use, um, you could just draw it on a piece of paper. I mean, you can, you can do it any way you want as long as you get something out there that's visual and you start fleshing out your idea and figuring out how users are gonna interact with your app and how they'll flow through and experience your app. So we're gonna go through an example now of a high level flow that I've done for one of my clients, fleshing out an app idea for them. So as you can see in this high level flow, we're just trying to understand how the users will flow through the application from when they log in to when they first hit the home page, and then how they go um, out to each section of this app. Then we'll go a level deeper and we'll actually flesh out the features, the buttons, everything that the user will interact with on the app. This, is, this can still be a drawing on you know, a piece of paper. It could still be you know, using draw.io or Adobe XD. But the main point is that you're thinking about how users are going to interact with your app. And when they click on a certain button, this and that, where are they going to next or what feature pops up? This is called wireframing. So when you're saying when you're doing this drawing part where you're actually going, hey, this is where my buttons are going to be and this is the, like a template, you're calling that wireframing. Yeah, we're calling that a wireframe. Once you've finished your wireframes, we can actually go into a prototyping tool like Adobe XD and uh, Sketch and all those other applications I was talking about. So if you're a bit more tech savvy and you, you don't like prototyping your app on a piece of paper, we can start fleshing out how your app is going to flow with a proper tool. Okay, so you're, when you're saying prototyping, you're making your actual buttons on the screen let you do something. So if you, yes. you go log in, it goes here. If you say go to exercises or donuts, it'll actually bring you to that page. Yes. And, but it's missing like the backend connectivity. So it's not really an app yet. It's like a shell of an app. Yeah, it's just a visual flow where you can actually specify how the flow happens, what the buttons do, uh, what pops up, all these types of things. Cool. And then is it, like, is that hard? Is it a hard, are there harder apps to use? Uh, I think it's quite easy. It's just a simple and easy drag and drop uh, for prototyping. So you just click a button, you drag it, and you just show where you want it to go. If you want it to go to the next screen or you want it to pop something up, you can actually fully specify that in these apps. So the next step is branding and design. So you're going to need to get a designer to help you out with this, or you're going to have to learn how to use Photoshop or just understand how to color your application using these tools. So you can do this in Adobe XD as well. You can start to color your buttons and color all your pictures that you put in there. 
Um, so your this is kind of like when you start a business and you need a logo and you need colors and fonts and all that kind of stuff. So you basically need a style guide effectively for the app. Yep, yep. And then you can put that over the top. So you're basically making this is the pretty part. This is the pretty part. Yeah, this cool. is when you're starting to build the materials to go yep. on your app. You're starting to think about your colors, your, your your font, all that type of thing. Yeah. Very quick sidebar. You were showing me something that website with the different colors. What's that called? Uh, color. Uh, Colors.co, yes. Okay. And then, so that's like, the, oh yeah, yeah. So there's different palettes. And so if you're not good with colors and me being color deficient, I would need something like this uh, just to see what colors work with. Yeah, yeah. so you can colors. put in your favorite colors in there, you know, yep. all the colors you're looking at to have on your app. And yep. then it'll it'll create a color palette for you very yeah. easily that you can use to, yeah, think about what colors you want and what other colors you can use easily. Or keep, to keep it consistent, yeah. basically. Okay. So step four is coding and development. So this is when you're actually getting a team or you're learning how to develop and code your app. So, so this is like <laughs> so this is like the matrix part where you see all the different uh, the, the coding, etc. Um, yeah, oh, definitely yeah. definitely like the matrix coding, running down the screen. Yeah. Des developers and coders in the background yep. smashing out your app. Okay, cool. So it's like connecting the visual of the front to the back end databases, Google yeah. Maps and that kind of stuff. Yeah, so once you've fully prototyped your app and you understand the features, the flow, what your buttons are doing, this and that, you'll take this to a, a development team and they'll consult with you on how you can actually get it developed and the costs associated. If you want to learn how to code, then it's probably going to take you a long time to figure out how to do every element of bringing an app to a life, app to life. Cool. So do you need, so we've gone through all these other different steps. Do you actually have to do those steps or could you just go to an app developer from the start and say, I have an idea, off you go? Uh, so, I mean, you could bring the wireframes in, you could bring the high level flow in, or you could bring an almost completed app to a designer or developer and they can finish it off for you. It just depends on how much you'd like to do yourself and how much you'd like okay. a team to do. So, right, so there's probably different levels of cost and that kind of stuff. Yeah, there's different levels of cost, definitely. So I've actually heard people do the first part, like the visual part, make a prototype and then just use that to get funding to have their app made or financed by somebody else as like an investment. So yeah, like yeah. is that that's the kind of thing that we're talking about. So when you get to the development part, that's when things are getting serious. Yeah, when you get into the development part, Hopefully by then you've got a very strong looking prototype that you can take to people. And yeah, like you said, if you want to get investors, go take it to an investor who you think would be keen on um, investing in your app and bringing it to life. So okay. this is a very, yeah, very, very cool part to be at if you've gotten okay. gotten this far. And then do you need to make two apps if one is for the Apple Mac, Apple store and one's for Android or is it the one thing? What kind of does that work? Um, so it depends on your developer. You yeah. can get a, a developers to develop it in hybrid code. So it'll be easy to post it on both the Apple App Store and the Google okay. Play Store. So it's but kind of like a language and just get yeah, a language yeah. that works on both. Get a language that works on both. Yep. Um, it's slightly more expensive, however, but at least you'll have your app available to a lot more people because yep. you're on two marketplaces. Yeah, okay. So is this the kind of thing you can just jump on Fiverr or Freelancer and just get someone overseas to do it? Do you, can you do it here? What's what's the story there? So you could yeah take your prototype idea and go find someone on Freelancer or Upwork or any of those platforms to get a developer to finish it off for you. But given an application requires a lot of um, technical things and technical tasks, you're going to want to have a very good relationship with whoever's developing your app so that if any problems arise or you know, you, the connectivity's um, stuffing up or there's a bug on your app, you really need a good relationship with your developer to ensure it keeps functioning. Okay. So like if there's like an update to your iPhone, can that screw up your app? Yes, definitely. So, you know, the, the, late, the latest operating system comes out and all of a sudden your app's not downloading properly or it's yeah. not functioning properly. So yeah. Yeah, you, you really need to think about having a long-term relationship with the developer yep. and also okay. for, your, for, your, for your users as well because your users are going to be using this application yep. okay. and you want them to have the best experience. Cool. So when I think about, and part if this is inappropriate or not, but I think if, what you get, if you get it done in Australia, it's going to be expensive. If you get it done overseas, the communication might not be the best. So mm. what, how does your company work? So our company... Uh, works differently on project to project but we'll bring in talent from overseas and we'll bring in local local talent as well to okay. get a, get an app done so, so you're like, you're like a hybrid yeah we're like a those. hybrid structure so you know we have a, a very large in-house team that we work with to design and develop but if we need technical experts or 
you know, industry experts will bring them in locally to help out. The final step of finishing off your app, getting it on the App Store, is to get it approved from Google Play and the Apple App Store. Is it hard? It's, uh, there's a lot of documentation involved to do with um, user data. If you've got payment um, gateways on there, you're going to have payment terms and all this type of things. If you've got delivery, you need to have delivery terms on there. So And is one easier or harder? Like is Apple harder? I'm guessing Apple's harder than Google Play. We've had, yeah, we've had probably more, <laughs> more apps get rejected yep. from Apple App Store than Google Play Store. And then does it cost money to... Put an app on in the app store yeah so you'll need to get a developer account for both apple app store and google play store yep google play store is a one-off 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 fee and uh the apple app store is a recurring fee of about a hundred uh dollars okay year. all right cool and then how much testing is it is it like a lot of testing do you just test it once do you test it 17 times or is it i'm guessing it just depends on the app uh it de yeah it definitely depends on the app but when we test we'll obviously do an assessment report and figure out what were all the problems we'll try and fix those We'll relaunch or re-upload the app and then we'll test it all again until it's perfect. Hooray. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so one of my big questions that I've got is like, what does an app cost? Is it $100? Is it $10,000? Is it $100,000? I actually have no idea. That's a very, very common question <laughs> yeah. I'm asked is how much does an app cost? Yep. And it can range. It can range from as little as $5,000 all the way up to $100,000 plus. Okay. So, okay. So, if you make it yourself and you can do all these parts and you're a genius, it's basically just the Apple cost, like the cost to put it on the store? Yeah. yeah. It's just the cost that you need to pay to Google and okay. Apple for okay. getting it up there. And then, so we've gone through these steps. So, depending on which step you outsource or depending on what you do and what you don't do, does that, that'll affect the cost, right? Definitely. So for example, if you, as we said, get up to the prototyping stage and you find you need someone to develop it for you, then you've essentially saved us a little bit of time and effort on the developers for conceptualizing your app and um, thinking about how it's going to function. So it'll be much easier for them to do their part in coding and development. So you've reduced a little bit of the cost there. Okay. And so if you go and get an app made, it's a pretty basic one and you get it done overseas, is five grand like a reasonable number? Um, Ballpark, a couple of screens, you know, you could get an app made for five grand. You could get an app made for five grand. It just depends on, yeah, your developer, how much they cost and how complex your app is. Cool. And what about making money from your app? Is it just the, if you make an app that allows you to make money, you can make money if people download it? Um, I mean, it depends on the app you're making. Yeah, you could charge for uh, users to download your app or you could put advertising pop-ups on there and make commissions from that. Yep. Um, or you could have some type of SaaS product. Where that a what product? A SaaS product. So yeah. a, a monthly subscription. Oh, right. So, okay. Yeah, where people pay monthly to use your app and, and, and use the tool. Uh, okay, so that is the five steps. Let me think, see if I remember it. It's basically coming up with an idea drawing it if you want to make put it out and make it visual use a, an app if you want to if you're using one of those apps you can create a prototype that will actually flick through the different buttons etc then you need to go and get a developer to make that app get it approved uh, on the app store and test it and then bingo bango you have a app yeah definitely and cool. then you smash the like button <laughs> because it was good information <laughs> good, please and also subscribe to our channel we'll have plenty more videos coming for you soon uh cool. and thank you for your time paul no worries i've really enjoyed being on the channel what if advice <laughs> <Cheers. laughs>